The Aesop for Children by Aesop. Read by Bob Newfeld. The Wolf and the Kid. There was once a little kid whose growing horns made him think he was a grown-up billy goat and able to take care of himself. So one evening, when the flock started home from the pasture and his mother called, the kid paid no heed and kept right on nibbling the tender grass. A little later, when he lifted his head, the flock was gone. He was all alone. The sun was sinking. Long shadows came creeping over the ground. A chilly little wind came creeping with them, making scary noises in the grass. The kid shivered as he thought of the terrible wolf. Then he started wildly over the field, bleating for his mother. But not halfway, near a clump of trees, there was the wolf. The kid knew there was little hope for him. "'Please, Mr. Wolf,' he said, trembling, "'I know you are going to eat me. But first please pipe me a tune, for I want to dance and be merry as long as I can.' The wolf liked the idea of a little music before eating, so he struck up a merry tune, and the kid leaped and frisked gaily. Meanwhile the flock was moving slowly homeward. In the still evening air the wolf's piping carried far. The shepherd dogs pricked up their ears. They recognized the song the wolf sings before a feast, and in a moment they were racing back to the pasture. The wolf's song ended suddenly, and as he ran, with the dogs at his heels, he called himself a fool for turning piper to please a kid, when he should have stuck to his butcher's trade. Do not let anything turn you from your purpose. THE TORTOISE AND THE DUCKS The tortoise, you know, carries his house on his back. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot leave home. They say that Jupiter punished him so because he was such a lazy stay-at-home that he would not go to Jupiter's wedding, even when especially invited. After many years, Tortoise began to wish he had gone to that wedding. When he saw how gaily the birds flew about, and how the hare and the chipmunk and all the other animals ran nimbly by, always eager to see everything there was to be seen, the tortoise felt very sad and discontented. He wanted to see the world, too, and there he was with a house on his back, and little short legs that would hardly drag him along. One day he met a pair of ducks and told them all his trouble. "'We can help you see the world,' said the ducks. Take hold of this stick with your teeth, and we will carry you far up in the air where you can see the whole countryside. But keep quiet, or you will be sorry. The tortoise was very glad indeed. He seized the stick firmly with his teeth. The two ducks took hold of it, one at each end, and away they sailed up toward the clouds. Just then a crow flew by. He was very much astonished at the strange sight, and cried, "'This must be surely the king of tortoises.' "'Why, certainly,' began the tortoise. But as he opened his mouth to say these foolish words, he lost his hold on the stick, and down he fell to the ground, where he was dashed to pieces on a rock. Foolish curiosity and vanity often lead to misfortune. THE YOUNG CRAB AND HIS MOTHER "'Why in the world do you walk sideways like that?' said a mother crab to her son. "'You should always walk straight forward with your toes turned out.' "'Show me how to walk, mother dear,' answered the little crab obediently. "'I want to learn.' So the old crab tried and tried to walk straight forward, but she could walk sideways only, like her son and when she wanted to turn her toes out, she tripped and fell on her nose. Do not tell others how to act, unless you can set a good example. THE FROGS AND THE OX An ox came down to a reedy pool to drink. 
As he splashed heavily into the water, he crushed a young frog into the mud. The old frog soon missed the little one, and asked his brothers and sisters what had become of him. "'A great big monster,' said one of them, "'stepped on little brother with one of his huge feet.' "'Big was he,' said the old frog, puffing herself up. "'Was he as big as this?' "'Oh, much bigger!' they cried. The frog puffed up still more. Oh, "'He could not have been bigger than this.' she said. But the little frogs all declared that the monster was much, much bigger, and the old frog kept puffing herself out more and more, until, all at once, she burst. Do not attempt the impossible. End of section one.